Well, here's an album that was a long time coming and an album review that was also a long time coming. So let's dive into it. Singularity, phase two, Cenotaph by Scar Symmetry. So Scar Symmetry is a, a Swedish melodic death metal band uh, getting their start back in 2004. Uh, they have put out now seven albums and seven singles, you know, seven of seven. This is actually the first time I've heard this uh, band and I've, I initially came to it because uh, within my podcast of The Metalhead, which you should all uh, listen to, uh, Grace Hayhurst had introduced me to this album and it's it's a banger, you know? Uh, this is obviously phase two of uh, The Singularity. Uh, and the first one, I believe, came out back in 2014. And there was a pretty long hiatus from this band. Uh, up till then, they've been pretty consistent at putting out an album, as I mentioned, pretty consistently. Symmetric in Design in 20, uh, 2005. Pitch Black Progress in 2006. Holographic Universe in 2008, Dark Matter Dimensions in 2009, The Unseen Empire in 2011. So like one album every year or every other year. Uh, and then the longest stretch of three years of the Singularity Phase 1, Neo Humanity in 2014. And now we have nine years. So, you know, coming off of this massive stretch of outpour of work to then land us into the Singularity Phase 2, Xenotath. Uh, Xenotaph, I gotta, I gotta, that's a PH. Uh, and we've had a little bit of a, uh, change up of members. The main individual that left was Kenneth Sell, who was mainly on bass, is now replaced by, nobody's replaced him. Well, there you go. <laughs> Um, but we do have Benjamin Ellis joining the band for this. Uh, and then the rest of the roster is Robin Carlson, Lars Falmalalix. Fel oh boy, I wish I pronounced that correctly. Uh, the two individuals that have had a clean slate throughout this is Per Nielsen and Henrik Ossian on drums for Henrik and uh, lead guitar and lead vocals uh, for Per. As I mentioned, this is my introduction to the band. This is my first time having to listen to them. So I haven't actually gone back to listen to Phase One or all the, any of their other albums, but man, I'm loving what I'm hearing on this. This is the really good intersection of a lot of that death metal bands that we had within the, you know, early 2000s, later 2010s. Um, nope, reverse that late 2000s, early 2010s. There we go. I pulled a Willy Wonka on us. Um, and what I really, really appreciate is like um, how accessible this track um, and this album is, even with how aggressive and how balls to the wall insane this can get. Like this album opens up with just this intense bombardment of music. You know, everybody is playing right at 11, right from the get-go. And then we get this very accessible, very rocking, almost like this, like, Linkin Park kind of style of uh, singing and playing styles. And that's found throughout this album. And that's the main thing that really kept me coming back to this album is the interplay between the aggressive, very hard, very death metal, uh, very sharp aspects. And then those very soothing, very accessible, very fun rock aspects that these boys have. And it's kind of flipping back and forth between the two of them. Uh, and because of this kind of bouncing back and forth, you know, this album is 11 songs, just under an hour, and it flies by very, very quickly. Like, I will put this on and I'll be shocked that the album is over. Like, I'm still ready to listen to another at least 20 minutes worth of music, which is something that I can't say for a lot of very bloated albums out there. This album, is, it's intense. It's uh, really quick and very punchy. It feels as though these boys had been writing this album for the nine years and really trimmed off all of the fat so that all that we're left with is the gold. And man, I can't help but really enjoy and really appreciate everything that's on this album. Unfortunately, because that, huh, you know, no other song really stands out and they all kind of bleed from one track to the other track to the other track without really, you know, uh, standing out or standing above the, the crowd. What I will say is when I'm listening to this album, I'm really enjoying it and I'm really invested in it. But once I'm kind of out of the album, I don't know. I, I, you know, there's a part of me that's like, oh, I could go for one more round. You know, there is enough uh, to entice me back for more. But 
you know, gun to my head, I can't really think of any of the other tracks that are found on here outside of that opening track. Yeah, I've been really enjoying this track. I think this is going to be a really quick, short and sweet album review of this. Uh, I, I, I've i learned that I will need to go back and listen to the rest of Scar Symmetry's um, albums because I've really enjoyed this and I've been craving this style of progressive uh, metal music. Uh, so yeah, we're going to see. Yeah, I think I'll just all wrap this all up and I'll say the Singularity Phase 2 Zeno Taff is one that I would absolutely pick up in physical format. You know, there's enough to write home about, but there's not a lot to write home about, if I'm being perfectly honest. Uh, I had a blast with this record. Uh, I think you guys will too. Uh, and I would recommend checking it out if you're into this more. In the intersection between like a lot of the metal uh, that was just like right post new metal. Um, but uh, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at for this album. Uh, I enjoyed it. I think you will too. Give it a try. Uh, and yeah. Maybe you'll enjoy it. But that's all I've got for The Singularity Phase 2 by uh, uh, Scar Symmetry. What did you guys think about this record? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Whatever you thought, please let me know by commenting down below. Uh, yeah, that's all I've got. So thank you all once again for watching. As always, you guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out.